Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Loki, a Disney original series. So right off the bat, I will say my surface thoughts. I just finished watching it. I enjoyed Loki a lot. However, if I want to sum it up, I might say that this has, for me, the most flaws. And I don't know, you know, you gotta watch it a couple of times if you want to get critical on it. But first off, it's created by um, Michael Waldron, who I've never heard of for Disney+. Plus. It stars Tom Hiddleston, who is great in the role. I loved him from the beginning with the Avengers and even the Thor movies, which are excellent. Well, not all of them are excellent, but there's a lot of other people whose names I can't pronounce, like Gugu Mbatha-Ra. This has a great blend. There are a couple of side characters that do not fit for me here. However, Tom Hiddleston and uh, Owen Wilson, I think it is, do a great job. Just really great. The chemistry, the writing is pretty good. Um... But there's, a, like I said, a couple of side characters, stories that kind of, or backstory kind of uh, information that just, you know, could have been maybe done better. This happened with um, WandaVision, and which I loved as a show, but I did have a nitpick or a gripe about what they did with Photon. It kind of felt like some of the side characters here were going to be more prevalent and kind of fell to the wayside. But maybe that has to do to service the greater story here. And let's talk about that. Uh, as a whole, the plot is pretty good, except it gets a little weird and diluted at a certain point. You feel almost left stranded. And it's done on purpose, I think, because the, the premise of the show is, you know, alternate worlds, alternate timelines. And this. But, you know, I don't give a lot of spoilers or plot reveals here, but the general gist is Loki from Avengers Endgame gets the terrorist act and disappears. So that's what this is about. There is a timeline where Loki does die by Thanos' hand, and there's many other timelines, and there's other Lokis that show up in the show with different actors and some horrible costumes, but that are the classic ones, which I really enjoyed. I like that they do that make fun of themselves in that way like you said as a whole this is a good show i like it a lot and you're gonna get going on most of the performances the interactions the unveiling of the plot was a little um obvious to me because as soon as i saw one of the hints at something i guessed it right away within half of the first episode I was a little fooled because I, I did have it wrong to a slide. I don't want to give it away, but there's a little twist going on. And it's done pretty good. Like I said, the acting is done pretty well. The interactions are really good. Owen Wilson plays his part. The growth is there for the first. Well, you know, this is like a half season to me because it ends on such a cliffhanger. And when you get six episodes... You know, you got to be careful. I think this might suffer from that. Uh, I had the same thing with He-Man. It's obviously cut off at a point where this has happened, this has happened. It's a little bit of a resolution, but hey, do you want to see more? And I got to say, I do want to see more Loki. I do, without a doubt. So let me get to my major gripe in this. And this is just going to be for me. Because I think this is one of those things. That was a choice, maybe, by the directors and the, you know, the production team. The first thing that got me worried with this show was the fight scenes. Now, the hand-to-hand -hand close up combat is bad. In the beginning, it's paired with music that's not very good for me. So, I might, as a critic, I might judge the fighting scene. And for me personally, the music didn't work. But it could have been a style choice because of, you know, some of the direction that the show was going. But I really didn't like it. And by the end of the show, 
it was annoying me. However, the last two episodes, I believe, at the end of the last episode, so the episode before the end and the last episode, I caught myself going, oh my god, it's not annoying me. And I gave it credit for being really good. So, maybe, you know, they had to get on all fours, they had to get everything going, the machine had to be moving, and then by episode 5 and 6, the hand-to-hand combat scenes were shot better, it felt more fluid and more visceral and reacting. Now, besides that, the special effects, grand, spectacular stuff is amazing. Although there is a couple of times, once in a while, I'm like, okay, this is a production set. And not, not as bad as the Inhumans, which is uh, pretty bad. But when you're a fanboy, you like this stuff, you're going to give things uh, a little leeway. Maybe that's something that someone would point out here. However, when you're dealing with alternate worlds, alternate realities, future tech, past tech, I mean, you've got, you're running the whole gambit here, and you've got Loki, magic, mischief. And it was nice seeing a callback to the old movies. Now they call them old movies. <laughs> and the characters that have um, been around him in the Asgard portion or type of, you know, story centric um focus and it really uh, endears you to loki uh i think like i said from the beginning tom hiddleston's loki has been amazing probably one of the first decent marvel villains because i think their style was was focused on the heroes not the villains so you have pretty great performances throughout marvel with villains but they're not given much and that's going to be a drawback and a critique that's fine I will say that on the average, though, most Marvel films are really good and decent. So you don't get bogged down in like, uh, oh, this is starting to annoy me or it's a trend I'm not liking. It it gets you by and you might notice it here and there. So the six episode setup doesn't serve the show well. And that's what my opinion would be. This had to be eight episodes. But it seems like a choice they made, and I'm not really happy with it. So I guess if you're looking at it from, uh, you know, I, I grew up with the comic books. I've said this on a lot of these podcasts um, since I can, since I first learned how to read, and I'm 50 now, so I do have a bias. I let things go. I do enjoy Loki in the comics a lot, although he can be overused to an extent. Here, you've got this uh, actor whose performances are great and a decent story that's going to get you by, but I call it decent because of the decisions they made. It it seems like it's 12 episodes, let's say, fleshed out and done as a story, and then they made a decision to stop it at 6 and do a season 2 trailer type, um, you know cliffhanger and in that it could be viewed as a little you know of a letdown if i'm gonna look at it though when i watched the first three episodes of wandavision i was like you know what people are gonna stop here they're not gonna you're taking a chance this one seemed to be a blend of we're gonna take chances but it didn't feel like it got going um on in a good way. I mean, the story, the acting, the talking, everything works. You're building up to the story, but the reveal kind of gets watered down and diluted into this almost like purgatory place, and it does work because that's what's going on with the show in a way. But when you end it at episode six, I think that's a little jarring. So you have this thing that might have to be judged on its later content. And I think that had to be the fact with WandaVision because I wound up loving WandaVision. But if I meet somebody and I say, hey, did you like WandaVision? And they say to me, oh, I stopped after episode three. I would understand why. Because you took a chance, you're getting craziness going on, and you're not getting the full context of what's going on. This show should have probably been a little tighter. 
am ended on a better note, like looking around, but it's definitely very good in my opinion for me. I'm going to say it could be the weakest of them, but that's not saying a bad thing. It's just that, I, you know, the fighting really drew me out in the beginning. Um, I'm trying to think, like, uh, if you if you know from the shows back in the day, like Xena and uh, Hercules, it was a, they were fun shows, but the, the the fighting got monotonous and too playful in a certain way. And the one thing I really hate, and they did this on that fucking stupid Game of Thrones ending. I don't want to see a big baddie and I'm supposed to be worried for my, you know, my hero, <laughs> Cole Loki, a hero, but I don't want to see him tossed around fucking nine times. Okay, this doesn't make me on my edge of my seat. And then the final throw knocks the breath out of the character. And then the other, the villain goes on and doing his things. You got to do that better. I don't, buy it it really draws me out so that's part of the fighting scenes thing that really annoyed me you watch the uh game of thrones season eight it's um you know the mountain and the hound and yeah you know they fight he can't get through he steps st- through both he steps through his fucking armor okay whatever and then just throws uh the hound around like seven times Pick him up, throw him. Pick, no, you know what? It's just annoying. I don't know why they do it, but they do it here for Loki in one fight scene, and it totally annoyed the shit out of me. And when I look back and think of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, excellent fights, everything is top-notch. You know, you've got um, some real cinematic feel to the action it's almost like this was made for the movies and they just decided to put it on tv type feel loki's the hand-to-hand fighting scenes felt amateurish and slow and clumsy but it could have been like i said a a take on the director on how he was coming in for close-ups or you know camera angles and when you pair that with the music that came in on cues, I didn't like it. However, on overall, I love the music and the sound on this show. I'm just talking about specific fighting scenes where, you know, the music's supposed to come in at certain beats and get louder or lower and the choice of music you use. So on that, I don't like that. However, when you're talking about the ambience of the show, the music that keys up, it's great. I love that. Really love it. And what can you say about seeing an old character come back? I don't know. It's it's a spoiler, but it's Sif. I kind of like Sif. She was in the Thor movies, and she showed up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And to see her get involved, they use lots of film and... I wouldn't say lots, but they use it well. Of old footage from the other movies, of interactions with the other movies. You see a portion of Endgame, and you're watching it in the show, and it... You know, because it has to focus on that Loki who gets away with the Terrasac. So, it's, this is a, like I said, maybe the weakest of the bunch for me. But that's not saying a bad thing. It's just pointing out that I kind of noticed these flaws more, which I didn't in the other ones. Now, my other nitpicks like these don't hurt the overall thing. I think Loki's a really good show. Some people might love it. And I could see people not liking it. Especially when I talk about the dilution and the loss of the past here. And which I think is done on purpose. I'll say that again. I think because, you know, it's hard to say without getting into spoilers and telling you what's going on. One of the um, one of the things is that right, I'll give a little synopsis so I can get my point across. Loki's arrested by the Time Variance Authority. And they're an organization that keeps the timelines in check, that they don't run amok, and it's not chaos. Now, it's revealed by episode six what is the underlying motive and goal. So, but as you go along, a team comes, arrests Loki, 
and he has to work with just TVA to get a another they call them variants a variant villain is loose and he's got to help them get them now there's this reveal I'm not going to give a little spoiler but in gist he he figures out that they're hiding in apocalypses so if I were to go to the 1950s to hide, and as soon as I start interacting with people and I change things, the time of variance authority will be able to detect it and come for you. But what Loki figures out is, if you're in a place, so let's say um, when the dinosaurs were hit or when the volcano exploded and destroyed uh, that village in Rome or Italy or whatever, you can't create divergent timelines that'll alert the... TVA, so you can hide there and do whatever you want. You forget, like, if there's a, uh, a meteor that hits a city and destroys it, you can go to that city before the meteor hits, and anything you do will not alert the TVA. It's sort of like that. So there is a theme of desolation, of, 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 of apocalyptic, and when you're talking about that, they do bring up Ragnarok. And... You know, the Norse myth that Thor fulfilled in Thor Ragnarok. All that's kind of blended in and done very well. These are the things I do not have a problem with. I rather enjoy. And your performances from the characters really carry you through. And like I said, there are one or two that I don't drive with. But I think it suffers the same problem as WandaVision. Is that they had ideas and went, ooh, you know what, let's save this for something else. Oh, I got an idea. All right, so let's cut a little bit of this. And so, like, they kind of changed the arcs and interactions with Loki in general, or the Loki theme of the show. So I was quite happy overall. I really enjoy this. I will watch it again. It's got that much for me. But I do got to be honest about some of the nitpicks for me because... It drew me out. It was noticeable, which I can't remember that for, you know, WandaVision and um, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The only thing I compare it to is like Iron Fist in this in the sense that I enjoy Iron Fist. I understand why people don't like it. But by the time you get to um, the Defenders, which I love. You know, they improved it. Maybe you can say it's the characters getting better and they don't want to use stunt doubles and the fighting seems weird. But when you pair that with just for personal interest or, you know, my personal likes that the music they use kind of drew me out. So that's how I'm looking at this show. But what can you say about Tom Hiddleston and, you know, Owen Wilson? You've got real growth. You really feel for Loki and what he's gone through. And when you look at the comic origin, so one of the origins of the comics are, um, so going way back, Odin and his family kill their father. You know, that is a myth. Marvel uses that from time to time because they just keep fucking changing things when they want, which is fine. And um, somewhere down the line, after right after Thor is born, Boy, I think his name is, keeps coming to, uh, he won't let Odin alone, and he's telling him about his crime of killing his own father, that he's, like, torturing him. Odin says he was going to go mad. Then one day, Boy comes to him in a vision and says, look, if you want to get have peace with me, you will take in a child whose father you've killed. Something to that effect. And... Odin does it. He's on the battlefield. He kills a giant, a frost giant. And the young Frost Giant comes out, kill you, he's a little kid, and they're going to kill the kid, and Odin's like, no, I will take him in, and Bull left him alone, but left him with a curse. This was like one of the reveals in Trzinski's, I think, Thor, pretty good, where uh, Thor ends Ragnarok, and he ends the cycle, it's really amazing stuff. Anyway, so... There's really not much you're really, you know, 
they don't really pull that out in here, like his origin, but you're looking at it as an adopted son of Odin. And forgetting about the origins like I do, you can see he does love his brother. He just wants to... It's almost like, you know, he feels like that power should be his and his to control. Fine. You've got a really good villain here. Great actor to use him or portray him. Like, I don't know if I could say, oh, I love Tom Hiddleston and King Kong or, you know, other movies that I follow him in. But, you know, he's Loki now and he's fucking really good. And when you're a good performances all around and a really decent script and okay fighting until the end you know it's gonna get you by but i can see this being a little more criticized than others there's a bleakness to it that's there on purpose and done very well and i just think they could have tightened it up a little bit gotten real serious about the fighting in the beginning it really drew me out. Um, and like I said, I don't want to see Tom Middleton grab throne, grab throne, grab throne, grab throne on the floor, crashing things, land on his back, roll over. I, it just, just gets ridiculous, and I don't like that type of tension. That doesn't build tension for me. So that's one of the little negatives. But if you're wondering about Loki, yes, it still feels like the cinema. All the shows do. They do it pretty well. Some a little better than others now. But it's there, the weight's there, it's got that feel. I do have nitpicks on it, and like I said, it might be the weaker of the three, but I want to make a point that that's not a bad thing, and that it makes the show bad. There could be people who loved it, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised. Outright haters, I might be surprised, but hey, you know, not everything's for everybody, so I can understand that. I do recommend it. I guess if even if you're not a real big fan and you're looking at it from, uh, you know, content just to just watch and hopefully this pandemic doesn't come back again too badly. I mean, it's already back again in that sense, but get vaccinated. Um, I don't uh, see this being a, a, a misstep at all. So I recommend it. Give it a shot. Loki. A Disney Plus show. They call these things like original series, but some reason that seems wrong to me. But you know, like I'm like I've been reading Loki for 50 years. Well, I wasn't reading when I was zero years old. Anyway, Loki. I liked it a lot. Do find flaws in it, but give it a shot. I think you'll enjoy it. There's some great performances, a good story, and a cliffhanger. Uh, you know, um type ending where it i do want more and i guess that's the goal right you make something you know you can discuss it you can have uh arguments with your friends or you know discussions and some might like it more but in the end i'm excited about season two of loki when it comes i think i heard that they're trying to get a season two of falcon and the winter soldier but i don't know WandaVision, I think it was a one-off, and they'll just mix it in. And fucking MODOK was fucking amazing. Go watch my podcast on MODOK. Uh, stop animation fucking show. Irreverent and hilarious. So Marvel, I think, is doing the right things. If that's a good way to end this. A little bit for everybody. I think this is a good move. I think it was smart. To do some of these TV series. It was just the thing to do these days. A lot of people don't want to wait one to three years. For a Marvel movie. To see their favorite characters. And by the way when I say one to three years. That's not saying that Marvel didn't make three movies a year. But you know they weren't your character. And they might only reference things. This is a good way in my opinion. To stop bridging it together. And I wish they would have done this earlier. Because what I would really like to see is. Daredevil. Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist. You got the Defenders, use them finally. Now, I think it has to do with contract stuff and property ownership, but I think there were one or two moves that Disney made to get them back. Like, I think Daredevil they can use now. Maybe uh, uh, Luke Cage. In any case, I recommend Loki. Watch it. Enjoy it. Let me know in the comments if you have any um, input. 
Hope everybody's doing well. Stay healthy. Be safe. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.